Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. This is Sam Gabriel and in today's video I want to show you how to use uh, console connect as a service mesh within a Kubernetes environment. Uh, so I'm back to my web blog app and now I want to introduce uh, service mesh using console. So as you can see on the screen here this is a quick view a diagram of uh, what this looks like. Um, right now my application runs with not, none of the red uh, things here. So the web application, uh, the Python application using Flask is talking directly to the database, the Mongo database, uh, just through the regular core DNS for uh, Kubernetes. So uh, just using the service name uh, in Kubernetes. Now, uh, I want to introduce a service mesh in my environment. Uh, for me, of course, this is an overkill since it's just one service talking to another. Uh, but think of it from a perspective, you know, just a proof of concept. Uh, when you have multiple uh, microservices, this is when, you know, service mesh comes in very, very handy. So the way this works at a very high level, you have a control plane and a data plane. A console uh, controls a control plane, so it will do configuration on the uh, proxies. It can uh, create intentions, which we'll, we'll see in the demo. Uh, sort of uh, sort of access lists in the traditional sense, and uh, and then the data plane is where the proxies uh, really um, shine. So built in with Console Connect, uh, we use the Envoy proxy, but you can swap it out with uh, third party proxy if you want. Uh, the key thing here also is that the communication goes through the proxies and uh, it's secured and encrypted using mutual TLS between the two. And we'll take a look at, at how that's done as well. So that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead into the configuration and then see how we can uh, make this all work. But actually, before we do that, let's take a quick look at my console UI. And as you can see, I've got the console service running. I have Vault running as well. And uh, I've got MongoDB already configured with the sidecar proxy. And what we're going to do in this demo is we're going to use the uh, webhook injector from console connect to be able to uh, register the Python front end uh, application and also uh, inject the sidecar envoy proxy. Uh, right now the application is running uh, through Kubernetes directly with no service mesh as you can see it's working fine and let's move over to our code and take a look at how all this works. So basically uh, with the webhook, all you need to do is um, create annotations. The first one here is just instructing the, inject, the webhook injector to uh, inject uh, sidecars into my pod. And the second line here, I'm defining the upstream uh, communication. So this is the deployment uh, manifest for the Python application and I'm specifying the service name in console that we saw um, in the UI here. So the web blog MongoDB. And I'm specifying the port, the default uh, MongoDB port. And optionally, you can put the data center as well. And that's the DC one that you see at the top here. Uh, you can have your services talk across data centers as well. Uh, that's also a possibility with console. And once again, the beauty about console is that it doesn't need to be only Kubernetes. You can run this on regular VMs. So if I have a data center 2 and it's running uh, maybe a, a bunch of VMs, they can all be part of my console and, um, and be discovered that way and you can communicate to it. So you can communicate across legacy infrastructure in addition to Greenfield and Kubernetes infrastructure. All right, so that's the first part. Um, I'm adding these two annotations here. And then the second piece is uh, in the application itself, I need to tell it where to where to find the database. Uh, so I had the database server defined, as you can see here, as you know the the service within uh, Kubernetes under the namespace web blog, and then the rest uh, the rest of the DNS discovery here from Kubernetes. So let's go ahead and comment this line and uncomment this line. And from a uh, from an ease of use, all you need to do is talk to the local host, and basically that that's where the Envoy proxies listening are. 
So the application is just going to talk to localhost and proxy will pick, up, pick it up from there and deliver it to the other side, to the other proxy, and ultimately to the longer database service. So that's really what I needed to change in my application. And from here, I'm just going to commit, say introducing console connect. And let's push this over. All right, so let's take a look at what we've got here from a pipeline perspective. Okay, so the pipeline is picking this up, which is great. Uh, I'm going to explain a few things and then come back, make sure that this has been deployed successfully. All right, so let's go back here and talk about how the whole injection happens. So the way you deploy, deploy console into Kubernetes is using the console Helm chart. And with the Helm chart, uh, you can define in the values file here to enable connect inject. And that again is, is a webhook. And what it looks like, uh, let's go into the console namespace. And from here, let's get the pods. So this is what it looks like. It will create this pod called the injector that will listen to the annotations. And once it sees a pod with that specific annotation for connect uh, is enabled or connect true, it will automatically inject uh, inject a couple of sidecars in there. All right, let's go back to our, our main namespace. Let's see. Uh, one, one thing I want to show as well is actually uh, what, what this looked like on MongoDB. So same exact thing. Uh, MongoDB was deployed using a Helm chart as well. And in the Helm chart definition file or values file, once again, I put the connect inject true uh, annotation. Uh, here, I don't need to specify upstream because really MongoDB receives communication. It doesn't initiate. So I don't need to, to define the upstreams in this case. All right, cool. Let's see if we've actually finished. Um, yeah, it looks like it's been deployed successfully. So let's go back here and do a kubectl. Um, let's take a look at the pods. Uh, all right, perfect. So we see here that there are four containers running in the front end pod and four containers running in the MongoDB pod. Uh, to quickly check the names of these containers inside the pod I like to use this little hack do a uh, logs and don't specify the container it's going to complain so now you can see there's a front-end container where my Python application is running uh, the console connect envoy sidecar the console connect lifecycle sidecar and uh, I'm also running the vault agent in here all right cool now let's go back and see our application uh, actually, let's take a look at uh, the console UI. And as you can see here, the front-end uh, service has already been discovered, front-end, and the front-end sidecar proxies also have been discovered. Perfect. So let's go over here to our application and click through, and it should work. It still works perfectly. And to kind of prove to you now that we're actually using the, uh, the service mesh, and that I didn't cheat. Let's create an intention here where the front end service is going to not be able to talk to my database. So I'm going to deny that. And now, if you go back here, let's just try to access the database, and my application is broken now. This is because I've specifically created an intention that denies the front end source to talk to the web blog MongoDB um, service. Let's go ahead and uh, allow that. I can delete it or I can just allow it and save. And if we go back, refresh this, it should bring back our application so you can see and it's working perfectly. Okay, cool. So that kind of uh, shows you how, how we were able to uh, quickly enable a service mesh using console. Uh, one more thing I want to show here is the actual, uh, let's see, the actual certificates that have been created. So I'm going to exec into 
my application here, as you can see. Okay, so here we're gonna run this command, um, which Envoy actually exposes an API. So we're gonna talk to the API and kind of look at the certs. And you can see here's a, a cert that uh, the days until expiration is one day. So it's a short-lived certificate. Uh, that that's basically what makes mutual TLS work. And uh, console take care of takes care of the certificates and certificate management for you. You can also um, use an external CA or you can use Vault to uh, to uh, manage the certificates for you as well and create and rotate those certificates. Uh, so hopefully this has been a quick demo that uh, kind of shows you how I've moved my application now from you know uh, just regular two regular services talking to each other using the native Kubernetes uh, DNS uh, service to a, uh, a full-on service mesh using console connect. So thank you for watching.